Mel certainly paved the way for Ricky, amongst others, to get into New Zealand rugby. Melody, you won two World Cups. Welcome back. Last time we spoke, I think it was about five years ago when we were winning this in Ireland, wasn't it? That's right. 2017, you were pretty much one of the first um, radio journalists to start well, interviewing or talking to uh, a number of us ex about women's rugby, and particularly around World, World Cup. So, yeah, I'm pretty stoked that uh, we're now at this level because you always used to ask the question, you know, OK, is it just an investment? Will it ever get the audience? Blah, blah, blah. And then finally, we're here. We have got a massive audience. Look, I was delighted with what I saw at Eden Park. Um, I didn't go to the game, but I live in Kingsland, and I've been telling people I've been wandering around. It was a really different rugby crowd and you know with the you know the sport and it's not a criticism but it has stagnated in this country and to see different kind of people wandering around the pubs a lot of kids running around look what it looked to me is it looks like a catchment that rugby's been trying to get for a long time now it's just I suppose after this World Cup it's about trying to get them back again well can I be a little bit cheeky and suggest to you look what happens when you put women in control of customer experience there you go Um, Michelle Hooper Julie Christie uh, has done an excellent job in providing a vision as to what they wanted at the Games. And so they settled on this festival thing. Um, I remember in 2017 at the University for the Women's Rugby World Cup, they had food trucks and all kinds of activations and stuff for kids. Well, that's what you'll get at Waitakere uh, this weekend for the Black Ferns match as well. Um, And also, you know, you saw at Eden Park with the music acts, which, um, by the way, Rita Wool, amazing uh, and also just they've got the poise and they've got way more music they've got cultural festival stuff um, with kapaka groups and, and different cultural groups yeah you're right it is completely different from an all-black crowd who are very very serious much older and very quiet this was a family crowd who made a heck of a lot of noise and we really enjoyed it. Yeah, look, I also, you know, full praise as well for the organisers. You know, they, they've got their brains on, sell the tickets cheap, pack the grounds and get the stands full because those pictures look fantastic. When the rest of the world tunes in to watch at whatever time and whatever hemisphere they are, when you see the stands full, it changes everything about the way you then view the game. Yeah, 100%. You think that, OK, this is a real deal. And even though us women's rugby players have felt that way for a long time, it's not until you get the validation from the fans. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, people enjoying what you put out there. I do have, um, I guess, a bit of a um, something to put out there about the Whangarei game. So I commented on one uh, match per weekend, mostly at the Whangarei game, it was about half full, the stands uh, in the weekend, which was a nice laid-back feeling. The, the people there, the volunteers, are really super friendly. It was it was cool to be there. But this Saturday is England-France. Yep. That will have millions of people watching it in France and in the UK. We've got to fill that up. Yeah, good um, call. I, I, just don't, you know, I just want people to buy the tickets, $5, 10 bucks, and get up there. It's only two hours, 10 minutes to drive up to Whangarei. There you go. Yeah, good call. And, you know, and and again, this is all, you know, something to build upon. It's a really good base to build upon. You know, the things that worry me, Mel, is that, you know, I've watched, uh, you know, you know I love my football, and I've watched, you know, the All Whites go to World Cups in 82, 2010, and New Zealand football just completely kick themselves in the back of the heel um, afterwards and not not get that momentum and keep that momentum going. So, I mean, maybe it's a discussion for another day, but it's really crucial that the best brains are now thinking also in advance, isn't it? Yeah, no, you, you've nailed it. Uh, we haven't seen the plan yet for the next, I don't know, three or four years for the investment into women's rugby and the Black Ferns, in particular in fixing up some of those challenges that were identified in that Black Fern review. So high performance re- resource, a community game resource, uh, and also the way that they select uh, the coaches for this team, the process has to be cleaned up. So there's quite a bit of work to be done, and at the moment it's great New Zealand rugby have put that extra cash in, but it is a band-aid until they fix the rest of it. They have to jump on board the wave um, that, we're, that we have right at this point. I know World Rugby has uh, may have some extra money as well to invest 
not just in some of the developing nations, but some support also in some of the bigger nations, because there's this big global competition that they're looking at uh, for the women's game starting in 2023 and around about October. So um, I think the World Rugby investment is already going to be there. They've actually committed to it, but every single national union has to get on board, and that is 100% at New Zealand rugby's feet. Melody Robinson is with us, World Cup winner a couple of times, um, and now what General Manager of Sport for Television New Zealand. All right, so in terms of the, the investment, and you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things at the moment where money's got to be put in. The question always being asked is, can it financially sustain itself? Can it actually operate on an economic level? How, you know, is it, is it even worth asking at the moment when that can possibly happen? Or is, or is that kind of, you know, chicken before egg or egg before chicken or whatever? Is it just more important at the moment to say, okay, look, resources have been put in. Those resources have got to be used in the right way so that in another 10 years we aren't sitting here asking these same questions again. Yeah, uh, so you always have to put investment in to grow anything, and that's just basic of business anyway. All the big corporates do that as well, um, the innovative ones. So there has been revenue coming into the Black Ferns uh, over the last, well, six years. I guess the challenge is that when uh, unions like New Zealand Rugby Union get their massive big sponsorship deals, the Black Ferns comes under the umbrella. So it's difficult to separate out what individual revenue is against uh, the Black Fern. So, uh, you know, I'm confident that they'll continue to uh, be part of that really attractive package, which is all about All Blacks, Black Ferns, uh, Māori All Blacks um, as well. I, I, where are the investors actually to hire one or two people who are 100% dedicated to selling the sponsorship um, and commercial integration around the Black Ferns, as opposed to having a, a commercial team that does everything uh, all together. I think that if you've got some really passionate people in there who really understood how to rework some of those contracts to make them a little bit more outside the box thinking and creative and utilise some of that amazing black fern talent back into the company, yep, yep. then you'd start to see a really good um, commercial strategy. So yes, yeah, yeah, invest exactly in that right. side and we'll start bringing some more cash in. Look, we talked about this in 2017, I remember too, that some of the stories, and, and it's really disappointing to me that the big corporates in New Zealand, they talk a good game. I mean, I look, I look at ANZ the other, uh, sorry, ASB the other day saying, oh, we, we might withdraw our naming rights from, from the ASB Classic because a Russian player might, and I just thought, oh, just get your hand off it and stop it. Start talking about how you can actually stick some of your billions into actually promoting things that are really happy, really positive, and really reflect our country. And that's what I thought Eden Park did on Saturday night. You see, now, you, you know, to me, if, if you let that, if, you, if that's water, if you let that slip through your fingers, well, you shouldn't have the goddamn job, if that's the case. Yeah, uh, look, ASB were fantastic with the Black Ferns, and they did a lot of extra stuff for them uh, when they were uh, sponsors alongside uh, the All Blacks as well. But you're right, I don't know why and where these big corporates are who and why they wouldn't invest in the Black Ferns uh, because, you know what, the accessibility to those players is so much easier yes. and also they're probably going to have you um, a more colourful story and I said this to you so long ago I and I keep repeating myself, come on somebody, get out there, sponsor this team, they are amazing. Montenberg did it, um, but obviously COVID has, has hit quite a few of the companies but it's time to get back into it and the profit margins are starting to improve and people are back into sponsorship so I'd love somebody and if, if a company does I'll rave about them to everybody and get all my mates to buy their exactly. products have it there yeah. Mm. A standard of play, um, even compared to four years ago, you can see an obvious improvement, can't you? The athleticism is there, and, and especially with the professional game and the amount of resources England and France have got. But even in our team, are we better than we were four years ago? Ooh, it's a very difficult question to answer. I think athlete-wise, uh, we are comparable, those two teams, 2017 and this year. The difference will be this year in the style of play uh, from that coaching group, and that's all of them. I think that that um, will elevate these Black Ferns to play an incredible style of rugby that we didn't necessarily see as much or consistently at that last 2017 Rugby World Cup. I would, I would say this to you, 2017 had one hell of a front row, and if there is any Achilles heel in the Black Ferns for this World Cup, it is probably... Um, around our props. So those fantastic props have got to work really hard and get themselves up to the level of some of those big chicks in the mm. English pack because they are 
bonus at scrum time. They're amazing around the field. They are very, very good. So we've got to match them in that front row and then we'll be really competitive. Isn't it interesting that, you know, we talk like that and we could actually draw a parallel with the men's game. And I look back to that Nelsbrook <laughs> test where the All Blacks, where we just got beaten out, beaten up front. And I just thought, my God, we've got to start playing smarter again. It's, I don't know whether it's just a New Zealand thing or the way that we actually play our rugby, but I just think it's interesting that, you, are, you, you know, the, what you're saying is exactly what we've been saying about the men all year too. Mm. And actually in that semi-final uh, 2019, they Oof. targeted that first five channel. If you remember Richie uh, Moanga, yep. the good news is that Ruahe DeMont, who's our first five and captain, she can tackle. Um, so if they target her, good luck on them. But yeah, no, you, you've got a point that is um, certainly something that um, lines up with the All Blacks and the Black Ferns around just a little bit of um, having to compete in the pack. So It'd be interesting. I mean, we've got Mike Cron there. Um, you'd have to say that he would have made a huge, massive improvement already in that scrum. Um, so I don't know. It's like a, it's uncertain. We don't know what the result That's will it. be. We know England are favourites. We're not. So if we imagine if we do it, how could will that storyline be? Oh, like this is and this is what I love about the intrigue about these tournaments is that. You have to wait. I've got no patience. You know that. I'm not a patient person. We've got, we got to wait. But, but this weekend, though, it's going to be the best indicator for a start. That that France versus England game is going to be one of the best matches to watch out of any any sport all weekend, I think. Yeah, it will be. Which French team will turn up? Yeah, exactly. Is the question. Mm. Uh, if it's the one that beat us at the end of year tour in 2021, then England will be in for a fright. Their last Six Nations match uh, earlier in the year, there was only a um, very short uh, distance between the two of them in terms of the scoreline and what they put in the pack. If anyone can upset England and pull play, it is France. They're the only team that can do it because England is so good. All right, then. Life good for you, is it? Old man good? Kids are good? Well, you know, Marcus is lovely protege. Ryan Fox is doing well on the, on the yes. golf scene, so my husband's happy. The two boys are on holiday. Um, yeah. Life is good, Marty. I'm, I'm a very happy lady. Just a little bit too busy at the moment.